the key thing is we want to get those puppies out as soon as we can. On this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. Once we hit it with this, we've got 20 minutes to get the puppies out. When you've got that many puppies that are all jammed inside a confined space, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. This is critical. Let me start sucking in there. Is he alright? At number five today. Oh, here it comes. Even though she's five and a half, and I guess a in the dog world, a mature mother. It's to be expected that she's just not too sure about the whole thing. Oh, no. right. Did you get a bite there? I did. You okay? Yeah, it's my last bite. <laughs> this breed is notorious for difficult births because of their small pelvis. So do actually have a puppy coming through now. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Heads through, but we've got to wait for that. Mm, big. The shoulders to come through, and this is where we're stuck at the moment. Come on, Vinny. I'm just trying to get my fingers up around its shoulders. It's 1 a.m., and Bindi is still trying to push out her first puppy. Give me a push, girl. Come on, Bindi. Come on, Bindi, give me one really good push. Push. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. So we just have to get air into these lungs. The puppy's out, but he's not breathing. This is critical. Let me start sucking in air. Is he alright? I'm getting movement, but it's not a lot of breathing. Hey, puppy. The physicality of the whole thing, how vigorous I'm being, is very deliberate. I'm trying to tell it that, hey, it's time to wake up, it's time to get going, you've got to breathe. And I'll do that any way possible. Okay, we're getting a little bit more movement. Mum knows best and she'll stimulate a, a movement as well. Moving. At last, Bindi's first puppy is showing signs of life. God, he's real. <laughs> oh, you little squeaker. Look, Bindi. A little boy. Relieved, because I must say I didn't think that little pup was alive. Oh. And you got kissed by me, sucked oh. in. <laughs> Chris, well done. That's fantastic. Thank you. That was hard work. It was, wasn't that it? That was hard. No, admit it. Hey, <laughs> admit it? <laughs> yes. I admit it. Bindi's contractions have started again, and there are more complications. The second puppy is in a dangerous breech position. It's sort of the position that that's dread. It has horrible connotations, and when you've got a head coming through, you can grab the head and pull that with the shoulders, but with this, you, you're grabbing hold of slippery toes, and that's it. It just makes a nightmare. I can feel the, the hips and, and the shoulders trying to force their way through that pelvis and they're just too big for it. Bindi's breech bird is not going well. It's awful, isn't it? Agony. And one more. Baby. Darling. It's okay. Got it? Yep. And when the puppy arrives, once again, there is no response. You can do it. I need to surprise all of us, huh? Any movement? No. No, it doesn't look good. Certainly tried. <laughs> My God, it's mm. been a hard 
a hard night, mm. isn't it? It's not over. Oh my god, <laughs> how can we do any more? <laughs> I don't know whether Bindi could take any more. She needs a rest, but I, I guess whether her body's going to let her have a rest is, is another thing. Chris faces a dilemma. There is at least one more puppy to come, and Bindi is now too exhausted to push. Didn't work out the way we wanted it to, did it? Next one will be okay, they won't. Yeah? No, it just hasn't moved. No, okay, let's go. No, okay. Good try. Let's do it. Yep. Bindi has been in labour for six hours, and Chris has decided her health is now at risk. She just has nothing to go on with, yet she's still got at least one pup inside her. Leave it any longer, we risk that pup. I just think it is worth now going to Caesarean. The emergency surgery will be performed back at the Bondi Clinic. I'm just through the back edge now. I'm just getting a bit of a second wind now at 4 a.m. <laughs> Is that what it is? 4 a.m. almost. The first puppy is stable and is being fed some much needed milk. After opening Bindi up, Chris discovers there is one puppy remaining. But the little girl is lifeless. Scream like you hate it. Oh. After eight hours of labour, Chris is fighting desperately to save Bindi's last puppy. And finally, the sound Chris has been waiting for. Doing pretty well now, breathing on her own now. Great, great, all right. Fingers crossed those signs continue to improve. Now, we just need to sew her back up and um, wake her up. waking up from the anaesthetic and is recovering well from her marathon ordeal. That was hectic. <laughs> hey mum, you know this one? You know this one? Hmm? Yeah. Sure. You know you actually can't get out of this one. We do have video footage to prove this is actually yours. Now Jeanette. Yes. You've met your little boy before. Yes. But you haven't met your little girl before. Oh. That's good news. Is Bidia huh? okay? Yeah. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah. She's just coming out of her seat now. Oh, sweet. Mm, beautiful. Oh, sweet. Noisy and beautiful. She looks a bit bigger than him. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. What a night. I what know. a night. Mm. Oh, was that hard, that last bit? Yeah, it was. Yeah. They are just so adorable, oh my mm. God. You're clever, clever girl. Mm. When Jeanette checks on Bindi, Chris can finally yeah, raise a adorable. delicate subject. Now, Jeanette, this is a bit embarrassing. We've come all this way, yet they don't look like purebred Norwich Terriers. What, who's dad? <laughs> He's a Jack Russell. Jack Russell crosses, <laughs> eh? That explains a lot. The only name we had was for the boy, Little Bone, or Boney. <laughs> Bindi's mother was called Juliet. And we thought we should name a girl after the mother, so she might be Juliet. If you've got Bone and Juliet, it's not too much of a stretch to have Boneyo and Juliet. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. It might be 6.30 oh, in the morning, but I'm still functioning. That's good, that's good. Yeah, see? Funny guy. Crazy times. Oh, yes. Bindi will stay at the clinic with her two puppies for overnight observation. Number four. Good boy. In Sydney, it's a busy day at Rob's practice. Um, hey, Rob, we need you. There's an emergency. And it's about to get a whole lot busier. We'll be back. Veterinarians are faced with emergencies every day. What's on, guys? Heavily pregnant Labrador Luna has been rushed in. The distressed mum-to-be has been in labour for hours, struggling to give birth to her babies. Straight away I can see Luna is in real trouble. She's really massive 
She's got puffy feet, so there's fluid everywhere. She's got some edema. So they said she broke water a while ago, so we better get into it straight away. She's so stretched inside. She can't get the initial proper push. Come on, sweetheart. One, two, two three. three. Things aren't right. I think we're going to have some problems inside that uterus. Five-year-old Luna is clearly unable to give birth naturally. So Rob is going to perform an immediate emergency caesarean. Once we hit it with this, we've got 20 minutes to get the puppies out. That's my rule. The clock's ticking as of now. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. A C-section is a serious anaesthetic risk because firstly, you could kill the puppies. Secondly, the anaesthetic could kill the mother. Thirdly, once you put them on their back, all those puppies press down on the major blood vessel, sending blood to the heart. Not all the blood can get back to the heart, the heart will slow down and that will kill everything. Let's go. Speed is everything now. If we take longer than 20 minutes, it can mean that the puppies will take a long time to wake up, if at all. Got to lift this right up and just make a little nick. Don't want to go through and cut the uterus or the pups. Add a little one. Okay. How many puppies? Out of ten. Out of ten, ten nine. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I'm going eleven. My anaesthetic nurse said ten. Someone said nine, so that left me with eleven. I didn't think it was going to be eight. It's more than that. If you get the first pup to come with the uterus, you can usually get the rest. Yeah. And see, it's a little bit blue, bluer than I like. Uh, that could be a problem. She's got an adhesion there. Okay, so what we're going to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to take puppies out without exteriorizing the whole uterus to start with. Because they're in a sac, you sometimes all you're just trying to help the sac up. Very important that nurses just see the whole sac. Just hold that for me. Go. Each tiny pup must be rubbed vigorously as soon as it arrives. When the female is giving birth naturally, she often stands up. The pup comes from wherever she's standing and thumps on the floor. Then she licks it all over and pushes it all around. Go. If you don't rub them hard and suck that mucus plug out, this puppy is not going to survive. So. That's one sound I love to hear when I'm doing caesarean. When you hear that first squeak, thank goodness, another squeak, another squeak. Oh, keep them going. That's a good part of it. These puppies, if they're alive when we start, they'll be alive when we finish. Not because of me, it's my surgical team. So far, the puppies seem to be doing well. Time's pressing now. Just say, why like a knock? To wake up the pups. Okay. But Mum Luna is in trouble. I'm not sure whether she's had a torn uterus or what she's had in the past, but the amount of adhesions that she has, is, that's just enormous. Another pup up. She's got a lot of adhesions and they're tearing through everywhere and she's hemorrhaging way too much. Too much blood. Rob is desperately working to save new mum Luna. Her puppies have all been safely delivered during an emergency caesarean. Too much blood. But now the young mum's life is in danger. This is a, a real shocker. This is not a routine caesarean. At some stage before, she must have torn the outside of her uterus. Maybe she'd torn in previous pregnancies and she had massive adhesions. And while we're trying to remove these adhesions, she's hemorrhaging. The amount of adhesions that she has is just enormous. I don't like to desex them at times of caesarean because it puts stress on the female. In this case, no choice. Really under the pump, I just want to tie everything off. We've had a lot more blood than I like. I feel very tense about this. One of my nurses will check her color to make sure she stays pink. If she pales off at all, we'll run a quick blood test and we'll cross match her and give her a blood transfusion if we have to. Oxytocin, let's get this uterus down. The good news is, 
it's really slowed down and she stopped hemorrhaging. Tie everything off. All the blood vessels that have been feeding the uterus, we've got to tie all those off and get out of there as quickly as we can. We are done here. Beautiful, that looks good to me. With Luna finally out of danger, a very relieved Rob gets to meet the puppies. Come on guys, one at a time. Bree, come on in. When you see them as puppies, you think, oh, I've got to have one. They are just beautiful puppies. Beautiful. Rob checks for any visible health concerns. Pellet's good, anus is good. Four boys, three girls. Another boy, a yellow one. They're all healthy, that's the main thing. Ten puppies, would you believe? Five girls, five boys, I can't believe that. And they're just really beautiful. At Rob's practice, Mum Luna is slowly waking from her emergency caesarean, and it's time for her puppies to get an important first drink. We put the pup straight on. Very important for the puppies to get that first milk. It's called colostrum. It's full of antibodies. Puppies don't get any protection against infection while they're inside the mother. They only get protection by drinking that first milk in the first 24 hours of life. When you see this, you hear them sometimes suckling on the teeth. Oh, it's so beautiful. I think cesarean is one of the most beautiful things. You, know, you are bringing life into the world. It doesn't get any better than that. This week's number three. Still on a working holiday in Australia, Scott's paying his fellow vet Rob a surprise visit at his Sydney practice. Hey Rob, how's it going? <laughs> Good to see you mate. Too well. I heard you were in town, what are you doing here? Well, I thought that I would give you my day off. Done deal, <laughs> I've got lots to do, come Dear. on this okay. way. Okay, alright then, let's get to it. Their first patient is six year old Anna, who's due to give birth to her first litter. Owner Faye has had a love affair with German Shepherds for more than half a century. We had our first litter, I remember the date actually, 10th of August 1968, we had our first litter. And then just been breeding on ever since then. Right. Oh. Well, we got her pregnant. <laughs> That's good. So we had an AI, Scott, and she had strictures, but I need to check and see if the strictures have gone. I don't think they have. A couple yeah. of days ago, they were still present. Anna, she has a stricture that's literally the vaginal canal is just way too tight. We know things are too tight and they're not going to open up. A puppy will get stuck. That could kill the puppy and could even endanger her life. Oh dear, he's donning a glove. That's never a good thing. Okay. Rob will examine Anna to see if it's safe for the first time mother to give birth naturally. Yeah, no, she doesn't like it. She's, it's too tight in this, buddy. So, all right, baby, that's all done. Good girl. Here we no go. choice here. No choice here. We'll do a cesarean. Yes. Okay. So I think she's in that mode of going, you know what, I just want them out of me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How are you feeling about the cesarean? Are you worried at all? No, not with Robert doing it. No. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Seal of approval. Looking good. It's good to hear. Well, I don't know, you're looking a bit nervous, but I'm sure it's going to be just fine. We'll do it for you. It's amazing to chat with Faye, a really experienced breeder. She's been doing this longer than I've been alive. So even though I'm vet with a lot of experience, I think she's seen more puppies born than I have. So Faye, have you got a family sweepstake about how many puppies she's gonna have? No, uh, not really. Should we do one now? I'm gonna say 10. About 10, I have no <laughs> <laughs> okay, Six or seven. Six, okay. Rob? We're going for seven. Okay, all right, so he's closer to you. All right, maybe I'm just wishful thinking. <laughs> Rob and I will take care of her for you and we'll take care of all these babies yes. and get them back to you as soon as we can. See what they look like? Yeah. I have a sense they're going to look like a German Shepherd. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've known Faye since I was a kid. She was in German Shepherds then, uh, and so was I, and she just loves her dog. Anna, she's got such a beautiful temperament. Good girl. Well done. Well, I know, baby. Okay. Sleep time now. Mm -hmm. When you wake up, you'll have lots of cute puppies. 
as well as the surgical team, there's an interested onlooker in the theatre to see Anna become a mum. So yeah, look, I've always brought owners in so they can be part of the process with their girl. It's really important. But with Faye, she's been through it quite a few times. She loves her dog so much. In the UK, when I bring patients in with their owners, normally at the point of doing the surgery, the owners will exit stage left. But you are going to stay for the whole procedure? Yes, you sure. Oh, my love. Yeah. yeah. I'm a bit shocked that Faye is in the operating theatre. A bit of a surprise. For anyone that knows cesareans, they're not pretty, they're very messy, but Faye seems to be completely fine about it. Have you seen one of these procedures performed before? Yes. Her mother. Her mother? Yeah. It's just amazing, I think. It's very brave. We don't even get you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to have to watch myself and do yes. the best job possible. I'm feeling a bit of pressure now. <laughs> Do you ever have any fainters? Oh yes, it's usually the bigger guys. You've got to tell them, as yeah. soon as you feel hot, please sit, sit down. down. And they don't, and it's a hard four, I tell them very hard four, and I won't be able to pick them up, I'm going to do the work. That's right, well, we're <laughs> focused on the dogs. Delivering Anna's babies will be a family affair for Rob. Thank you. Daughter Ainsley is a nurse in the practice. <laughs> Fantastic the skills are amazing. <laughs> because you're working with your dad, you feel the need to just abuse him every time. <laughs> Sorry. So who's on puppy catching duty today? You, two, three? Lovely. With Anna expecting a large litter, Scott and Rob will need every available family and staff member for the job ahead. Goodness me, Faye. Wow, there's more. Oh, look, there's our first one. Already got a movement there, Faye. Okay, girls, who's got this one? Get ready. Done. Caesareans, it's kind of a frenzy of activity. There's puppies being thrown in all different directions, but it's all to get the process done as quickly as possible. The key thing is we want to get those puppies out as soon as we can and get them breathing. The swinging is just about trying to empty their lungs, the fluid, to get them to start breathing. Oh, it's always amazing to have all the hands you can have. Generally, you have the nurses, and then you have the other vets, and then you get the receptionist, and then you get the bloke walking down the road, and the lady walking with the trolley, just, any hands are good hands. A lot easier because you were here, I tell you, you made life a lot better for him. <laughs> <laughs> we might keep him here in the spray. <laughs> you may not be able to go home. More here. More. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Well done. I've done heaps of caesareans in my time. One day I did eight caesareans in one day, but what keeps me going is that you're bringing life into the world. It's just, it's magical. How are we going, ladies? All breathing? And they're coming out nice and healthy, and they're coming out thick and fast as well. As the healthy puppy count rises, attention turns to who's ahead in the litter guessing sweepstakes. Somebody's there? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. 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 Scott was the closest. <laughs> so I think she must have known it was the first and last litter, so she didn't really put it on. Oh my god. All right, Dr. Scott won the sweepstakes. Yeah. You guessed 10. I was way down, I was on seven. Absolutely rubbish. He's a great vet, he's just rubbish at choosing how many puppies there are. Hey Ainsley, can I ask you, your dad, does he not like losing? It's sort of showing right now. I always win, so he's You always, oh fine, yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure. Someone's got to lose. <laughs> With all 10 of her offspring healthy, the focus now is how new mum Anna is faring after giving birth to such a mammoth litter. How's she doing, Ainsley? All good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Faye, do you want to come and see your new puppies? Look at these. Okay. <gasps> like two litters in one, isn't it? Let me pop your hand in there if you like. <laughs> oh, look at them. Oh, what a good mum. How many puppies do you think she's going to have? About six. You must feel really embarrassed right now. Do you I feel do, embarrassed? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, no, that's, that's fair. That's I fair. I just thought they're probably big ones. <laughs> well, these are big too. <laughs> so many. They're so gorgeous. Look at them. I think it's amazing that Faye is in the operating theatre showing her Anna's gorgeous puppies. 
She does seem a little bit intimidated. She's got a lot of experience looking after puppies, but 10 is a lot. One, two, three, go. Okay. Save girl. Yeah. So you can hear that beautiful sound in the background. That's uh, the sound of this gorgeous dog's puppy. So she's just recovering now, so it's a perfect time to put puppies on mum and give them their first drink. Two boys, Scott. Ah, lovely. Boys are always very hungry. <laughs> Look, there's your mummy. There she is. It's Bobby on the milk bar. Yeah. yeah. And still for me, after all these years, I love doing it. I love getting those puppies breathing and then the mother you know, accepts the puppies. You wait with her while she does that. Oh, it's just a beautiful feeling. There you go. That one. It's lovely to see Anna recovering from the anaesthetic. Her puppies are taking their first sips of milk. Things are looking good for Anna's new beautiful family. And I'm sure together with Faye, enjoy a wonderful life. Number two. Up on the Gold Coast at the Animal Emergency Service, Marie has arrived with her heavily pregnant golden retriever, Greta. Good girl. Come on. Greta is fun-loving. She is the light of my life. So I'm coming in today to get Alex to have a look. Here she is. Hey, Good girl. She's looking ready. Very pregnant. Isn't she? <laughs> You're looking wonderful, aren't you? Glowing, I think, would be the way you put it. Oh. Alex okay. needs to determine exactly how many puppies they could be dealing with. All ready to pop those pups out? I wonder how many you've got in there. When dogs have puppies, there are a number of things that can go wrong, which is why we do x-ray and ultrasound. Come on, let's go. Good girl. My dog's not going up there unless the table's clean. <laughs> It's to be clean for my girl to get up there. Marie isn't just a client, she also works with Alex. She's the kennel attendant in our hospital, which means she pretty much cleans this whole place. All done. We call her Nana Marie because she really is like our Nana. Hey Greta, how you doing? Gerardo is my life partner, but he's also my partner in the hospital. Greta, come over here. Come Greta. And he's very helpful when it comes to heavy lifting. Oh, oh big girl. God. Girl. So how many puppies do you think she's got in there, Marie? I think around about 10. I'm going to go with 12. You're going with 12? Yeah. We'll see. Jim. Let's see. Eight. Eight, 10, 12. It's always a bit of a guessing game as to how many puppies are in there. You ready, sweetie? I'm just going to roll you over, Greta. Good girl, good girl. There you go. That's my girl. Ready, team? I think we've pretty much got all of her in. OK, I'll press the button. One, two, three. Find out if I'm the winner. Look at that! Whoa! Look at them all. Wow. There's a lot of babies. Look how crowded them. they are. There's yeah. not room for all of them. We must be fighting for space. With the x ray showing multiple puppies overlapping, Alex is concerned some might not be getting enough oxygen or could be crushed. When you've got that many puppies that are all jammed inside a confined space, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Literally filling all of her belly there. Owner Marie and vets Alex and Gerardo want to settle a bet and find out how many puppies there are. Here we go. One, two, three. We've taken the x-rays and guess what? Ten. Eleven. Really? Twelve. Twelve. There's twelve puppies in there. Alex has won the bet, but now must investigate the possible complications of such a large litter. All right, let's take her through. We know we're there. Any pregnancy comes with its set of risks. She's got 12 puppies that she needs to push out, and she may just become exhausted and not be able to deliver all those puppies herself. If at any stage we feel like she's in trouble, then we would have to discuss about whether we would need to take her to surgery to do a caesarean. The health of each pup is also critical, so Alex must now perform a vital examination. Ultrasound will allow us to see how healthy the puppies are. So we'll be looking for the heart rates of the puppies and that'll help to tell us whether they're in any distress or not. So there's the heart beating. The heart rate for this particular puppy is 185 beats a minute. It's a perfect little puppy heart. It is crowded in there, isn't it? I don't think anyone wants to be that close to their brothers and sisters. <laughs> So is it possible because there's so many puppies crammed in there 
that we could be coming into some trouble. That is possible. When you have that many puppies in there all fighting for nutrition and, and blood supply, it can mean that some of them are not getting the nutrient supply that they need. Because if some of them are in distress, it does happen sometimes that we'll have to get in there and get them out quicker, do a caesarean if we have to. You do what's necessary. Marie, these tests help us to give us more information, but really, we're not going to know how things are going to go until it actually comes time for her to deliver. OK. Now, we can't possibly see all of the puppies on ultrasound, but the ones we can see look healthy. And that's really good news. So everything so far is looking good. Perfect. Thank you very much. But the news is bittersweet for owner Marie. Hi, Dandala. This is where I have to totally rely on, on you, Alex, because... I don't think I have to fly over to New Zealand. My mum's... My mother's dying. So, I fly out tomorrow morning. I'm staying there until she passes away, which is probably going to be within the next 48 hours, so I totally have to rely on you, Alex. And she'll be a bit well looked after with my friend Judith who's flying over from New Zealand to look after her for me. You take care of your mum. Yep. Judith and I can look after Greta. Obviously, we're going to let you know how we're going every day. Um, and when it's time for her to have the pups, we'll be there with her. Yep. I feel like I'm letting Greta down, but I'm not, because I know that you're going to be there, so... Good girl. It breaks my heart to leave her, but it would break my heart more if I wasn't with my mum. The most important thing now is for you to be with your mum. Yeah, my mum was diagnosed a few weeks ago with terminal cancer and there is not much hope of her lasting until the weekend. Marie, you know we're going to look, take really good care of her and look after her. Thanks, mate. <laughs> if Greta can just hold on till Tuesday, I'd be the happiest person in the world, but if she can't, she's in really good hands. I trust her with you. We could really start to see Greta deliver these puppies at any moment. And so I'm going to be there for her in every way that I can. You try and wait. Me? On the Gold Coast, the moment is finally here. After a long wait, Greta is in labour. Good girl. You're doing so well, Greta. And she's already delivered five of her 12 puppies. She just got into it and knew what to do, and off she went. Sadly, owner Marie is in New Zealand to be with her terminally ill mother. So daughter Melanie and friend Judith have been on puppy watch. A little stressful, but me and Judith have been a good team, so it's been good. But with so many puppies expected through the night, they've called in vets Alex and Gerardo for much needed help. When I got the phone call, I turned to G and said, I promised Marie that I would be there, so let's go. Hello? Hello! Oh my goodness, it's all happening! <laughs> Hello! Sure wow. is. How many have we got so far? Three boys and two girls. Wonderful. Marie is going to be so excited. Are you cleaning your puppies already, Greta? She's just been amazing. She's just acing this. The licking that she does will encourage them to take breaths. Although Greta's doing an incredible job helping her puppies to breathe... And oh, then, and they've got some pushing there. ..she's feeling the strain of delivering such a big litter. And puppy number five is struggling. Yeah, this one's a bit blue, hey? Yeah, he's a bit quiet, that one. Yeah, I'm going to rub him before a bit. She's a first-time mum. She's got a lot of puppies. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah, when they're born, their lungs are filled with fluid, so they have to quickly get rid of that fluid to try to then get air in their lungs. Some of the reason why Mr. Blue looks a little bit blue. A little bit blue, he actually. Looks a little bit blue. <laughs> Gerardo's vigorous rubbing works. It's better. Yeah, and I, I think there's another one on the way. Here we go, we've got a puppy. Puppy, good yeah. towel. Come on, push little darling. Oh, with good girl Greta. <laughs> puppy number six arrives, and it's a little boy. So this little pup's still got the placenta attached, but we're just going to let Greta have a good lick there. That's it. 
Suddenly, there's another surprise arrival. Owner Marie calling from New Zealand. Hey Marie! We got six bundles of joy for you, Nana. You're doing a wonderful job. Greta gets all the credit. She's, she's doing all the hard work here. And I think there's another one on the way very shortly. Oh, yep, here we go. We got another one. Here we go! Yay! Wow. Marie has just been to her mother's funeral today. This would have to be one of the saddest days of Marie's life. But seeing these puppies being delivered, I think it's quite healing. Gosh, that one caught me completely by surprise. <laughs> An emotional Marie is overjoyed to witness the arrival of three more puppies. She doesn't seem to be having any problem at all. She's been great. But no one can relax just yet as a tenth puppy arrives. I was going to give that to you. This tiny puppy is in trouble. Very lively. Come on, sweetheart. I delivered the tenth pup and I just know there's something wrong. Come on, breathe. Come on, little one. I just hope there's something we can do to bring this pup through. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. We are trying, honey. Come on. Come on. The puppy's heartbeat is faint and it's not breathing. I really want to be able to save this little girl. I'm also aware that Marie's on. She's watching all of this. And I can only wonder what she must be going through at the moment. Is it not responding? No. Wow. Yeah. G and Judith are working on this little pup, but I know from G's face that he's really not getting any response. It's no movement at all. We've lost the fight for this little girl. No, I'm sorry. We've lost one, Mary. I'm sorry. devastated, but we've got to get back to Greta because she's still got more puppies to deliver. Good girl. And she's going to need all the support she can get. Oh, that was a big push, that one. She's looking really tired, eh? I think she's given it everything to this point. Greta, you're a good girl, darling. This one's coming backwards. It's puppy number 11. Oh, that's the whole thing. No, there's not much movement. Come on, come on. All right, Dryad, I'm going to hand this one to you. Three, one, yep. two. Yep, you know. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, mate. We got a light one. Yay! Listen to that, Dina. Can you hear that, Marie? Yeah, I can. There's a lot of strength in this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> what a great noise that is, hey? That's a relief to hear that. Nice pink little nose. Means she's taking lots of oxygen into her. Nice dry lungs, I think there's one more on the way, and I. We just need her to get this last one out. Here we go. Come on. He's moving. He's moving, Marie. Lucky last. Pretty big for the last one. Sure. Six. It's a boy. <laughs> hey, that's your last baby. Good girl, Greta. The last puppies arrive. How's that little one going? Yes. And they look great. They're in good health. Greta, she looks tired. We're all pretty tired, actually. Very proud of Greta. She's a good mummy. You've done an awesome job, Alex and Gerardo. Mm -hmm. And Judith and Mouse. Thank you so much. I think we've all done a fantastic job, but the credit has to go to Greta. 11 of Greta's puppies have made it but they'll have to be closely monitored over the next few critical days to make sure they're healthy. You just come home safely, Nana, and your extended family will be waiting for you when you get here. <laughs> it's a big family. It sure is. You're going to be one busy Nana. Two babies? Yes. Marie is now back from New Zealand and has her hands full helping Greta with her thriving family. Good babies. And they're about to get some very excited visitors. I'm oh, really looking forward to seeing those puppies, honey. Yes. Hello! 
Alex and Gerardo are keen to see how the newly expanded family is doing. Oh my goodness, is that not the cutest thing? Gosh, she's so attentive, isn't she? She's doing a really good job. Greta looks fantastic. She's obviously loving her new mum life. She's looking after them. She's in there making sure they're OK. She just looks like she's born to do this. They smell like puppies. One of the things we wanted to do today was actually do a little health check on the pups, but once you see them walking around in their little crate, crawling around, making puppy sounds and suckling healthily, there's, there's nothing we needed to do. They just looked amazing. Now your eyes are open, there's no stopping you guys, I'm sure. I've seen lots of puppies born before, but these guys, this is really special because Marie's part of our family at the hospital and because I was part of bringing them into the world and seeing them now, it's a special moment. And this week's number one. I've been an ambassador for Assistance Dogs Australia for years now and I've just had a call from their CEO, Richard Lord, to tell me that one of their dogs has gone into labour. Now, that's interesting, but what's really fascinating is where she's giving birth right now. It's 11pm and Chris is heading to a very unusual maternity ward. Our girl's giving birth in jail. At the EMU Plains Correctional Centre west of Sydney, Chris is met Second by the manager of security, Angie West. So we've had one puppy? Yep, one puppy. Yep. There's no doubt this is an extremely strange situation to be let into a prison to deliver a litter of puppies. It's not every day you do that. I'm Chris. I'm Jay. How are you hey, going? How are you? For 10 years, assistance dogs' pups have been raised by inmates in prisons around Australia. But this is a groundbreaking moment in the program. When you remember that this is the first time ever assistance dog puppies have been born inside a prison, it's a pretty special night. And for me as an ambassador, it's one that I was never going to miss. This is Brielle. This is Brielle. And she's just been panting like this. Panting, yep. No straining. Only pushing the pup out, yep. yep. Prison inmate Jodie's been Brielle's carer for the past four months and delivered the first puppy on her own. I knew if something was going to happen. She gave me a look of help. Help me, please. I just patted her and let her know that I will be here for her the whole way through. We've got a puppy just coming out. Come on. Just let her give her a final push. Yep. Okay. And where are I? All right. I'll just get this sack yep. open nice and quickly. So we're wriggling, which is good. I'm just going to tear that umbilical cord like that. Let them do her work. The worry with a small puppy is that even a small amount of blood lost can be pretty significant. I'm just going to tie off the umbilical cord. If you just hold it there. Yep. So that's why I go to the clamp straight away and stop that bleeding. Yep. X-rays have indicated Brielle is expecting a huge litter of 11 puppies. The thing that I guess is worrying me right now is the fact that she's going to become exhausted no matter how she approaches this. It's going to be a long night for her. It's going to be a long night for all of us. Almost an hour since the last puppy. I just want to feel and see where these puppies are at the moment. Chris is at the Emu Plains Correctional Centre. He's helping inmate Jody to deliver the first litter of assistance dog puppies ever born inside a prison. She's still quite big, so we know there's still quite a few puppies in there. Brielle has already given birth to two pups, but there are grave concerns for the remaining nine. I have a very strong bond with Brielle. These pups are so special and we've had such a big involvement in the whole process. They've become a whole world. Where's your puppies? I can feel a puppy engaged in that birth canal. And from there, it should be on the fast track, on the escalator going out. But it's, it's just sitting there. The issue I have in that birth canal is it's narrow and it compresses the puppies. If it compresses those puppies for too long, then the blood no longer goes to their brain and you can lose them there. So we might give an injection and, and get things moving. An oxytocin injection should induce stronger contractions. All right, so we're getting some contractions. Yep. Oh, look. Finally, Brielle delivers another puppy. Here we go again. She might want to stop. I don't think Brielle really knows what's happening. Yeah, got another contraction there. She's sitting and there's a puppy there. So they're coming thick and fast right now. Well, yeah, it said she had to move it along. It did. The fact is, I'll take them lying down, sitting down, upside down. Whichever way they're coming, as long as they're coming out, I'm happy. 
Oh, there we go. We've now got five puppies out, but when you look at mum, she's starting to look pretty tired, and that worries me because she's still got a lot of work to do tonight. And if we start to lose her, then all those puppies still inside of her are in big trouble. Here we go. Well done, girl. That's a big one too. Yeah. Back at the Emu Plains prison, Brielle has just given birth to puppy number 10. <laughs> this one's trouble. Straight away, you know. <laughs> when they're born, it's almost like they're a member of the royal family. They can't hope to understand what lies ahead of them. They have this destiny. They'll grow into being assistance dogs. Dogs with such an incredible purpose. Anything more in there? Give us another push. It's obviously been a big ordeal for her to get 10 puppies out to this point, but I guess she has to muster all her reserves for one final effort to produce this last puppy. Right now, it's really hard to tell whether Brielle's work is done or whether my work is far from over. You never better out than in. I wouldn't know that personally, but that's what they tell me. You got any more for us? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where's the other one? Where's the other one gone? At the Emu Plains prison, it's been more than 30 minutes since Brielle delivered her last baby. X-rays had shown she was expecting 11 puppies, but it looks like technology got it wrong. She just looks like she is. She looks like she's satisfied. Inmate Jody and Chris are now convinced the long labour is finally over for this patient mum. So now I feel there and I just can't feel anything else. So I think that... That's it. That's it, yeah. Ten's not bad. Not done. When there comes a time in a young man, man's life where they ask you what you're going to be when you're older, well, I can tell you. And you're going to be an assistance dog, aren't you? Well, this is just the start of something massive. They've got such an important role with people with disabilities. They're born to give the best to somebody that can't give the best to themselves. I would never have imagined being able to be a part of something like this. I think they're in very good hands. Okay. All right, take care. Okay, thank yes. you. No problem. I would hope after everything I've seen tonight and how amazing jody has been, that assistance dogs might look at her and go, you'd make a pretty good puppy raiser and she can have at least one of these puppies. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're such a good girl. I can't describe the love I feel already for Brielle and these pups. Dr Chris, how are you? Good, how have they been going? Oh, great, they've just grown oh, wow. so much. Chris is back at the Emu Plains Correctional Centre to visit Jody, Brielle and the 10 assistance dog puppies he helped deliver. Have we got enough? Typical prison <laughs> officer always counting. They're just bliss. Look at these animals. They are gorgeous. So, oh, he's kissing me. He loves me. <laughs> it's a nice thing to come in and see the impact that it has um, with people that are working with them and also the inmates. It's life changing for them. It brings out a good side. It brings out a caring side and, and, and loving side. And I, I guess here you don't really get to show that. She's a, a very good girl. You're a good boy. Being able to give your love to these animals is gives you back your love. Within weeks, the puppies will be leaving to start their training. It's still hoped Jody will be able to raise one of them here. They're going to make a big contribution, and Jody's been a big part of that. It'll be a sad day mm. when they go. Yeah. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.